Pakistan went to friendly countries, China and Saudi Arabia, you know, to actually deal with the current account and external payment deficits. That we have failed to, you know, control the budget deficit, neither increase the tax and the other revenues. Most governments were more interested in short-term transaction or a transactional approach rather than offering a policy solution to give direction to economy. The PMLN basically believes in promotion of business. There is no short-term solution and our politicians look for very short-term populist instruments. The stage is open, whoever comes in power, it will all depend what kind of economic team they put in. If they go old school economic management, I'm afraid that will not result in revival of economy. As Pakistan stands at a crossroads with the 2024 general elections on the horizon, the nation's economic landscape takes center stage. Join us as we delve into the economic legacies of the key political players, namely the PPP, PMLN and PTI. Economist Harun Sharif sheds light on their past influences and evaluates their potential to navigate the challenges ahead. If we take a look at Pakistan's economy for the past, let's say, 20 years since 2000, uh, Pakistan has gone through, you know, consecutive bailouts through different modalities, uh, consistently through IMF and lately, you know, through friendly countries. So two things come very clear, that there are fundamental flaws in the macroeconomic management. And second is that Pakistan has used this geopolitical position to actually go for, you know, solutions of these fault lines at the macroeconomic level. Now, Pakistan, as you know, was a frontline partner of the West during the Afghan war. So there were lots of concessions granted through aid and also through multilateral institutions. So Pakistan continued to deal with it. Uh, lately, after the withdrawal of US-led forces from Afghanistan, Pakistan went to friendly countries, China and Saudi Arabia, you know, to actually deal with the current account and external payment deficits. So that is where the temporary relief has been given to Pakistan. But unfortunately, none of the government has really put a serious effort towards increasing competitiveness of Pakistan's economy so that our exports can actually compete with the, you know, emerging economies in Asia like Cambodia or Vietnam or Bangladesh. And we can, you know, increase the inflow of foreign exchange to meet with our external requirements. Second biggest flaw in Pakistan's economic management, which I see is that we have failed to, you know, control the budget deficit, neither increase the tax and the other revenues, nor we have decreased the uh, 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 expenses which are not necessary. Particularly, we spend a lot of money on, you know, infrastructure just to, you know, build roads and bridges rather than health and education. Uh, third thing, I think, which Pakistan needs to very carefully see that the structure of economy has not changed and this structure is struggling basically to, you know, fulfill the requirements of 250 million people. And as a result, Pakistan has become a net importer of essentials, even, you know, food items like pulses and edible oils, which come from outside and that put, continues to put pressure on our current account. Now, that's the macro situation. So when I look at the fault lines that have people tried to really build the private sector, and this is a very important point, that the space for private sector has shrunk, particularly in the past five to seven years. There's a lot of role of state in job creation, either through state-owned enterprises, or now we are, you know, whole of the CPEC was a government to government uh, you know, agreement for infrastructure, be it power or roads or port development. So private sector space has shrunk, particularly with a very high interest rate and very high inflation rate. Cost of doing business is not suitable for Pakistani industry or private sector to expand. 
Now that's a bit worrisome because any economy which has grown, uh, it is the public expenditure investments which attract the private capital and Pakistan is not somehow attracting the private capital. So if I sum up, uh, as a result of these, you know, uh, I wouldn't say policies, result of these interventions or result of these economic management tools, uh, Pakistan's industrial competitiveness has gone down. Uh, we need to create a lot of jobs for young people. So job creation, if market is not growing, economy is growing at 2%, that's a challenge. And obviously, we need our exports to grow at least by 15% every year to meet our external liabilities. If we don't do that, we'll continue to be under the pressure of external payments. Now, having seen that, we have tried, you know, both parties, People's Party and PMLN, and in between the military, you know, regimes, and then a four-year stint of PTI. So if one looks back, uh, and sees that's the kind of situation one comes up with that most governments were more interested in short-term transaction or a transactional approach rather than offering a policy solution to give direction to economy and this is something which our competitors have done and they have grown many fold it takes time but they have set a direction Within the discourse surrounding Pakistan's economic history, one narrative gaining attention is the Bloomberg article lauding Nawaz Sharif's tenures as the pinnacle of Pakistan's economic success. Mr. Sharif suggests that indeed PMLN believes in the promotion of businesses, but again, it's still old-school economic management obsessed with infrastructure development. I have just seen the Bloomberg's report which says that Nawaz Sharif's, you know, economic management is perhaps better than others for the economy. It will give some, you know, confidence to markets. I think on the positive side, I understand that PMLN basically believes in promotion of business. Uh, they have done some of the, you know, interventions like they opened up the banking sector. But again, when I look at it and I call it the old school economic management, it is still quite, you know, obsessed with infrastructure development, motorways, roads, you know, and government to government contracts to China or Turkey and others. Uh, also, the whole focus is on uh, financial management through Ministry of Finance rather than giving policy solutions for longer term. Uh, I would say, that I would categorize this statement with a, you know, little bit of caution. Uh, caution in the sense that the old school thinking, it's a new world, the rules of the game have changed. If PMLN comes into power and focus on developing private sector-led growth, they would have to look at policy interventions stop subsidies, stop protecting their constituencies of traders, stop really looking at all the economic decisions with the lens of tax collection. You know, with that, open up trade basically with the neighbors and not necessarily, you know, putting indirect barriers. So these are the things they will have to look at. But most importantly, for the first two, three years, the challenge would be that how do they deal and rebuild the confidence of international institutions, more particularly IMF, because I think there, there were communication gaps between Mr. Dar and IMF before, and that you know trust deficit will have to be built should they come in power and you know take this forward. Uh, my uh, in in conclusion, I think my assessment, having seen a number of countries. There is no short-term solution and our politicians look for very short-term populist instruments. I have sympathy with that, but now it's the time that certain tough decisions will have to be taken in terms of expenditure management, in terms of expanding the tax base, in terms of picking winners in the industry rather than patronizing the old school industry, uh, which has not really yielded the kind of returns which Pakistan needed and government will have to take a backseat 
uh, from just continued borrowing more and building infrastructure. Now, can they do that? Currently, when I look at the manifestos, although no detailed manifesto has come, we are still focused on giving relief to people like, you know, PMLN, PPP, they say they will give X 300 megawatts of free electricity to the poor. They will basically increase the BISP. That is a good thing, but worries, you know, the serious thinkers and public policy makers because that's more on relief rather than wealth creation and growth. I think we need to do both and set a direction for the future wealth creation because that will give confidence to international institutions and also to the investors who are looking at Pakistan, be it governments or be it private. So the uh, stage is open, whoever comes in power, it will all depend what kind of economic team they put in. If they go old school economic management, I'm afraid that will not result in revival of economy. As the South Asian nation evaluates its options for the future, the discussion continues on how political parties can navigate economic challenges. Stay tuned for more insights, analysis and updates on Pakistan's economic journey. Subscribe to Don News English.